Today we'll go to a familiar verse in a Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. The title of the message is self destruction. Self destruction. Self destruction. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. The Bible says, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord, we thank you for saving our soul from hell by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for saving us with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. Lord Jesus Christ, it's time to listen to your word through your preacher. Please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Give him the liberty, power from you to declare your word to us. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to focus or worry about the things that are happening outside or that are happening in our lives right now, but help us to set those things aside and just take all the things that are going to be said directly from you, Lord God, in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Lord, we're sinners and we need you all the time. Please Amen. cleanse us with your preaching, Lord God. Yes. Help us repent of our sins Amen. and help us to be better Christians for you. Yes. Yes. Protect us from devil's attacks. And Lord God, as what the verse says, help us to just put our pride down, Lord God so that we won't be destroyed. We thank you, and we give all the glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So it's a very familiar topic, pride, pride. And I'm pretty sure many of the people here and many of the people who's listening online, you already memorized this verse. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. The best way for a human being to self-destruct is having pride. Yes. Whether you are young, whether you're old, whether you're in between, whether you are you know, intellectual, whether you think you are stronger, pride will definitely destroy you. God will always humble you. That's how he does. And God will definitely humble someone who's not just full of pride, even a little bit of pride. You know, some people don't realize that, you know, a little pride will definitely become a full pride in no time. Think about it. What was the reason that Satan fell? Because of pride. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you were to go to, you know, Isaiah chapter 14, let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. When you demonstrate as a Bible-believing Christian this wicked sin of pride, you're demonstrating the character that made Lucifer down from where he was. And this is a very serious matter. The Bible talks about pride in many, many different places. And before you know it, you, pride will get a hold of you. A lot of times, the question always becomes, who do you think you are, right? right? I mean, a lot of times when, you know, couples or spouses fight, they say, who do you think you are, right? You know, that comes up. But in real, you know, question that you have to ask yourself is, who do you think you are, right? Yeah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? which this weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of the pit. Just think about it. Whenever you think you're somebody, whenever you think Anything other than less than nothing, saved by grace of God, 
you're just like Lucifer, you're just like Satan. I mean, whether you want to admit it or not, you are. And I fall into that pitfall temptation very easily. Because as a human being, you want to be commanded. As a human being, you want to be noticed. As a human being, you want to be applauded. As a human being, you want to be recognized. As a human being, you want to get that pat on the back. Right. There's a reason why we can't pat ourselves on the back, <laughs> right? You know, except for very few people. I mean, they're peculiar, right? You know, like circus or something, very flexible. Yeah. But God made you that way so that you and I cannot pat ourselves on the back. Thank you, Lord. There's reason why. Because pride. It brings destruction. Many of the, you know, so-called Bible-believing pastors who fail, it's because of pride. You know, I could resist every temptation out there, you know. Money, mm -mm. you know, I've been poor all my life. And then I've been poor all through the ministry. It's not going to impact me. It's not going to affect me. And what do you know? They fall yeah. because of money. You know what? You know. The Bible says, be holy, for I am holy. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping myself very holy, right? You know, I'm not going to let the lust of flesh get the best of me, right? You know, if I see, a, you, know, you know, different sex, right? And I'm, I'm not going to let them entice me, tempt me. I'm too strong, right? And what do you know? They fall, yes. right? And we're talking about married pastors out there with wife and children. A lot of their ministries get destroy because they let the pride get in the way thinking that you know I could resist any temptation in the world by myself they stop giving glory to God and here's a kind of a funny story there was a heavyweight boxer named James Quick Tillis back in the day if you know him I mean you know you're a senior person right or you like boxing so he said, you know what? He's a cowboy from Oklahoma. So he went to the city of Chicago. He got off the bus with two suitcases. He looked up in the sky. He goes, man, I'm going to conquer Chicago, full of pride, yeah. full of haughtiness. And when he looked his head down, his suitcases were gone. Yeah. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> yeah. <laughs> God will let you learn very quickly, Maybe. you know. When your haughtiness is trying to reach the sky, right? You know, like the Lucifer, the devil, the Satan, trying to get to the most high. Yeah. And the Lord gets your attention very quickly, right? You know, it happens to us all the time. You know, we, we're like, oh, you know, outside appearance, we're always like, oh, no, praise God. You know, we give God the glory, honor, everything, right? But deep inside, in yourself, you're like saying, you know, I'm conquering, you know. Whatever it may be, you're conquering something, and you're like, oh, yeah, man, I'm doing it. And before you know it, God has taken those things away, you know. And God keeps you humble, and God will make you humble. Amen. That's why pride is something that you and I have to be aware of. You and I have to fight against every second of your life. Because within that second, when you get some glory to yourself, pride will just come in and it just blow, blow up inside of you. It's like a sponge, right? You know, if you're ever doing dishes, right? If you, if you put a little bit of water, you know, it just explodes, right? Expands. Yeah. And the pride is just like that. It just needs that little bit of dropping of water, little bit of your sinful ways to make it expand. And once it expands, it's all over. It's just self-destruction after destruction. You know, a lot of times it happens during the good times, right? Yeah. That's why, as a Christian, you should never look down on anybody, you know? Amen. I mean, you should never, ever look down on anybody, whether it's your brothers and sisters in Christ or even people out there, lost people out there. Your first reaction when you go through the skid row, Fifth Street on downtown L.A., Shouldn't be that, oh, look at them, oh, look at them, you know, living out on the street. Yeah. No. You could be just like that. Yeah. You no, know, because of your pride. Yes. I mean, question comes again. Who do you think you are? God gives you everything, and God could take it away. Besides from God's grace and mercy, you and I are nothing. Amen. 
Amen. Right? Yes. Let's go to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, even though it's such a harsh verse, it's one of my favorite verses because it keeps me in check. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. And, you know, you hear some of our brethren always discussing this. And people don't discuss this because out of the pride. They discuss it because their pride could get in the way. They want this word of God to really saturate in the hearts so that you can think of yourself more than nothing. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17, all nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him, to the Lord, less than nothing and vanity. Think about it. You and I should have an attitude that we are less than nothing, especially in the sight of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Think about it. God gives and God takes us away, and then Job had his testimony. Do you think you are where you are because of your looks, because of your intelligence, because of anything else other than by grace of God, especially as a saved Christian? Just remember, you are less than nothing. Amen. That'll keep you in check, Amen. right? If something good happens in your life, I'm less than nothing. I give praise to the Lord, yes. right? You know, sometimes it happens to everybody, right? When something good happens, you start taking credit for yourself. And especially in a very family-oriented <coughs> cultures, Right? Especially Asian, Hispanic, you know, those type cultures. It just, it just doesn't stay with you alone. Your pride pollutes the whole family. And every single time when someone meets somebody, your mom and your daddy start telling everybody, hey, my son, my daughter did this, did that, you know, all of that. And then boom. You know, Lord's gonna keep, Lord's gonna humble you and your family very quickly. Amen. And that's how Lord does things, right? I mean, I've experienced it. You know, I mean, Lord chasing His children, right? Yes. So you yourself have to be very, very careful. Am I displaying from my heart this wicked pride and haughtiness, right? You know, I mean, God forbid, right? You know, I have like a high position, you know, at my company, and I start announcing to every single person in the church, you know, thank you for your prayers, you know, I'm here, you know, because of you guys. But deep inside, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm a pretty good worker, you know, I made this way, you know, I mean, I put in my time and this, that. Man, you know what's gonna happen? The Lord's gonna humble me very quickly, you know? I'll be like, I'll be like out of job, you know? The Lord's gonna be like, ah. You know, who do you think you are, right? That's Lord's good at that. He knows the perfect timing. When you think everything's going well, you think nothing's going to go wrong. And that's when Lord's going to be like, okay, let me get your attention. Yes. Yeah. That's why it's so important for you and I to constantly remind ourselves that you and I are less than nothing. The reason, you know, we have Bible believers here. The reason we have Bible believers all around the world, like Midwest, Alabama, you know, Australia, everybody who's listening online, even in the African region, is because you want hard preaching. You want sins that you have preached against you so that you could change. And number one, it's always been a pride. Because if you have pride in you, you can't change. You could agree with me. You could say that's good. You could say, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord, all you want, but you're like, it's not for me. And that's the pride, right? Yes. It's not for me. You know, it's for my brother right there, sitting there. It's for my sister right there, right? You know, it's for all those folks here. But me, I've been checking my pride, you know? <laughs> I haven't been that haughty lately, right? So I'm okay. Yeah. Man, that... Statement alone shows how pride for you are, yes. how much haughtiness you have. That's why, you know, when people ask a question, right? Uh, are you, do you think you're proud, right? 
And people automatically, you know, say, no, nah, I'm not. Man, what a proud person you are, <laughs> right? I mean, until, we, until the day of redemption, until we get rid of this, you know, yeah. sinful body, until the Lord comes back and our body turns into Christ-like body, yes. we'll always have that. Amen. We'll always, always have that. That's part of the old man, I think, most destructive to a new man. Yes, sir. Man, that pride always comes along the way, yeah. you know. So after intro, let's go to point number one. You know, pride leads to irreversible, I, I had to use, you know, Spanish word, you know, infierno, right? Amen. Pride leads to irreversible infierno. That's number one. People don't get saved because of their pride. They're on their way to hell, infierno, because of their pride, right? There's some people who's listening to this message thinking that they're Bible-believing, saved Christian, but they're lost soul who's on their way to hell because of their pride, right? I agree with KJV. I agree with dispensationalism. I agree with every doctrine that you're teaching and preaching. But when it comes to salvation, God showed me already. And I had that experience. When I was a child, I was supposed to die. But I didn't die. God saved me. And I accepted Christ right after. But you're trusting your experience. Right. Plus Jesus Christ. Not saved. Yeah. You're like, oh, you know what? You know, one day I was praying. And I was praying. And then there was a vision. I felt like some spirit came into me. Which is a devil spirit. But, man, God's spirit came into me. Yeah. I knew at that moment I was saved. Not doing anything, not realizing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, trusting only the blood or torment of Jesus Christ and accepting him as your Lord and Savior, right there. the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then you do that, and then you come to a church because it's so different from any other church. It preaches out of King James Bible, dispensationalism, Amen. all this deep doctrine. Yeah. And then you think you're saved. And someone talks to you because... Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes. Because Lord wants you, Lord wants you to get, wants to see you get saved. Yeah. Someone talks so, talks to you, preaching talks to you, word of God talks to you, making you realize that you know what you're not saved. You know your testimony, you're trusting in something other than Lord Jesus Christ to save you from hell. Right. But now your pride gets in the way. You know what? Who are you to tell me? It's just me, between me and my God. Okay. What does that even mean? Right? If you're saved, you should be able to give a clear-cut testimony Amen. according to the Word of God. Yeah. If you can, something's wrong with you. Right. right? Man, just had my wedding anniversary. I remember my wedding anniversary. What? I'm not going to say, I don't know. I don't know if it was sunny, snowy, you know. I don't know if I even said I do. You know, I just don't know, you know. Do you think if, if you ever got married, you, you give that kind of reaction? No, you remember exactly when you said I do, right? You remember when you tied or not, right? You remember the, um, almost everything that happened. Yes. Because that was a special day. And you're telling me that, you know, when someone asks you how you got saved, you refuse to answer the question. You refuse to give anything concrete, related, or show from the Word of God how you got saved, the testimony. I mean, what's wrong with you? You're letting your pride stop you from getting saved. Amen. I mean, you're like, who are you to tell me this? It's just between me and my God. No, you have to check. You have to. Yes. If you don't check yourself, and if you don't go to the basics, if you don't go to the way beginning, and if you haven't gotten saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you have to check. Amen. You have to. Why do you want to take one in a billion chance, gazillion chance of burning in hell? Your pride will send you straight down to eternal lake of fire. Yes. Don't let that pride get in the way because it will be so sad. 
you thought you were saved all these years, even going to a Bible-believing church, you know, learning from Dr. Ruckman's commentaries and teachings and from Bible teachers, and then suddenly, when rapture happens, you're still down here, right? I mean, you're like, well, what, what happened? What happened? What happened? You know, I mean, I thought I was saved. God spoke to me. God spoke to me that day that you're my child. But come to find out, you've been deceived by the devil. So if you're trusting anything other than Lord Jesus Christ to save you from hell and trusted him as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know for sure, then you have to check. Right? Yes. It is indeed between you and the Lord. But if you did get saved, it's something very easy. Even a child can testify to everybody that I'm saved. Amen. Because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Simple. If a six-year-old could do it, why can't you do it? That's right. Because of your pride. Yes. Right? Oh, man. I look so dumb. I look so embarrassed, ashamed in front of a little kid. you got to let your pride stop you from getting saved. Because a little child could give a clear-cut testimony. And that's foolish. Yes. I mean, you're a fool. As a fool, you're going to burn in hell. Yes. Before it's too late, you know. Don't think of it as me. We're trying to condemn you to hell. No. We want you to get saved from hell Amen. by getting rid of your pride once and for all. Amen. Because we talk to many, many people out there, many people from different religious sex out there, right? Like, you know what? You know, you believe how you want to believe. Just leave me alone, right? I can't. Because you're teaching false doctrine. You're trusting false things to go to heaven. Our job is to let them know clearly how to get saved. Man, I was going to uh, some secular church for eight years. No one ever showed me clear cut salvation. Only by the grace of God, I got saved. What if I died in between? And I wasn't saved and I was, you know, led by these false people. But many people are going through the same thing. That's why as, if you know for sure where you're going, then it's your job, it's my job to help break their pride and get saved. I mean, I mean obviously, Lord's going to have to do the work, but we could be used as tools. Yes. And you can't stop, right? You know, if you have gotten saved because by grace of God, you were able to break your pride. You gotta go to your family. You gotta go to your cousins. You gotta go to your neighbors. You gotta go to your uncles, distance. You gotta go to your acquaintance. You know, coworkers. You gotta go to everybody. You gotta let them know. Yes. Yeah. Tell them God of Jesus Christ. Your pride, if it's stopping you, right? Then you gotta get rid of it. Break that pride. So point number one, right? Pride will lead to irreversible infierno, right? To hell. And secondly, now it's more to, you know, Christians. Pride will lead to inflated importance. Pride will lead to inflated importance. Again, without God, you and I are nothing, right? Amen. But pride makes us think we're something, right? That's why it's very, very careful. You have to be very careful. That's why I don't try to give accolades and commendations, you know, about you in front of people. Let God do it, you know. Lord, wouldn't you want to receive it from the Lord instead of me, right? Yeah. I mean, we will still share great testimonies, right, which will encourage and admonish brethren, right? But if your purpose in life is to get glory from other people, get recognition from other people, then you're full of pride, right? You're doing this to be recognized. You're doing this so that people could acknowledge you, right? If you're leading souls because you could hit certain numbers, very dangerous. Now you come up to me every week, you know, Pastor, I led 10 people to the Lord. What do you think? <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's it. Uh, could you announce it in front of people? <laughs> no, brother, I can't, right? You're like, you know, oh, yeah. And then you, I read the whole Bible, Pastor. I read it through already. You know, we're not even 
you know, September yet. Good. You know, I hope you got closer to the Lord and you got something out of it. And then you're sitting there waiting and waiting, you know, during announcement. Oh, he's going to probably say it, you know. You know, I've finished reading my Bible and stuff. And you don't hear it. And you suddenly feel like, oh, pastor doesn't love me, you know. I don't like this church anymore. I mean, people, you know, I already told them already, you know. I expect, you know, some applause from people. Like, no. Your inflated importance comes from your pride. Yeah. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let the Lord give you commendation. Let the Lord give you a good job. Pat on the back. Don't seek it from human beings. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And you should just be thankful that you and I even have any opportunity to serve the Lord in any capacity. Verse 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. The Bible says, But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. You know, that's how we say, give glory, honor, and praise to the Lord for anything and everything in your life. Verse 18, For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commandeth. All right? Don't give you credit to yourself. Don't try to get glory, credit from other people. Let the Lord do it, right? If you get rid of that inflated importance that you're something instead of nothing, then you can do this, right? Only in Christ, just giving glory to him for everything, whether it's every, everything that, you know, because when, you, when bad things happen to you, you kind of tend to stick to the Lord more. You know, so I'm not going to go deep into that one. You know, if you're going through illness, sickness, you know, any financial problems, you know, relationship issues, anything hard in life, you tend to go to the Lord. I mean, that's just human nature. But I'm talking about when you are in a good place, you think, right? You have a good job. You have a good family, right? You know, and then you have good house, good income, and all of that stuff, right? Everything seems to go well. That's when you have to be careful of your inflated importance. Yeah. You just have to be more thankful to God when good things happen, right? Yeah. More. It's like, honestly, to me, like when good things happen, in order to check myself, I have to give him double the thanks. Because going through the trial, I still try to give thanks to the Lord because it's helping me to, you know, get closer to him. It humbles me, right? Yes. But when the good things are happening, I have to really ask myself, and you have to ask yourself, am I really giving the right glory and honor to the Lord when things are going good, right? right? You know, when you just got promoted from your job after hard work, are you giving glory to yourself or are you giving glory to God, right? Does yeah. your family know that you're giving glory to God instead of yourself? Does your friends know that you're giving glory to God instead of yourself? Because you can't hide it. It comes from your heart. Right? You're like, yeah, I'm a new blah, blah, blah. I give glory to God. But your tone, attitude, everything is like, you know, that's not true. It's just vain words that's coming out of your mouth. But those people wouldn't even, even go there. You know what? You know, I give glory to God for every opportunity, you know, every advancement. You know? yeah. Without him, I wouldn't be anywhere. And then you give double the glory, double the things, double the praise. So when the good things are happening in your life, make sure that you don't give any of, you know, glory and any of credit to yourself. So pride brings inflated importance. And another point is that pride brings impaired insight. Impaired insight. What does that mean? Pride will cloud your judgment. You know, when we are in a humble state, when we are more in a humility state, you know, our judgment is actually a little bit more clear because we tend to trust the Lord more. We tend to go to the Bible more, right? You know, believe it or not, 
I mean, it is part of a human nature. When you're going through the hardship, you kind of read the Bible a little bit more. When you're going through the hardship, you kind of think about prayer a little bit more. Because you got something to pray for. Like, Lord, please help me. You know, I have this going on. Please solve it for me, right? However, when things are not going good and stuff, man, you, you have this pride in you that you don't really seek the Lord, right? Like I mentioned, like, last week, like, first thing you should think about when you wake up is spending time with the Lord and reading the Word of God, yes. right? But I guarantee you, if you are full of pride, if pride has gotten into you, you have other things on your mind. Yes. You know, essentially, if God is not number one in your life, something in your life has given you pride to put that thing up there instead of God, right? And a lot of times it's money. Right? The only thing is you're talking about, thinking about money, 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 love of money, 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 or your sinful nature and pleasure, right? Yeah. You know? I mean, as much as I don't want to put a cold water to people like who's dating or whatnot, right? It's good. But first thing you have to think about is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. That's yeah. it. If you start putting your future spouses ahead of you, you're going to go downhill. That price is going to come in, right? You know, oh, yeah, you know. Lord, I know you're important, but... This stage that I'm in is very important, too. You understand, right? You understand. I mean, Lord knows everything. Who do you think you are, right? You have to understand, if any of your judgment has been clouded recently, it's because the pride has gotten a hold of you. You're not making the right decision. You never make the right decision if you're full of pride, right? Even you are hearing the same message, reading the same verses, Hearing the same teachings and preaching, people have different reaction. Why? Some people let go of their pride, and they really want to change. They really want to serve the Lord, right? They want to become a living sacrifice, Amen. like Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. Yes. For other people, they just take a little bit, right? People full of pride, including myself, we always try to take what's good for us. Yes. That's it. And then what's harsh for us, we just leave it alone. Or we kick it. Right. We hear it and then let it go. You know? It's like abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, only for this topic, right? Lord, you know. But for this, I have to go there. You know, I have to do this and that. You start giving excuses. So pride will definitely impair your you know, insight. And finish with this, lastly, pride leads to inevitable indifference. Does that mean, right? You're going to be indifferent toward things of God, toward things of your brethren, toward things of anything in life. Because you're so self-centered, God becomes second, your brethren becomes third, and everything else is just down the toilet. Right? Didn't this ever happen to you? Man, it's all about vain glory now, right? As Philippians 2, 3, 4 says. It's all about you, bring glory to you, right? And then you say, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Do you really? I mean, how much time do you spend praying for your brethren, not only listening here, but for brothers and sisters online everywhere? Do you ever pray for online listeners who doesn't have a church to go to, who doesn't have a local church? They're like middle of nowhere, or they're in a place full of liberals and devils everywhere. And they have no opportunity. Did you ever pray for them? Did you ever pray for their local church to be set up? Did you ever pray for their spiritual state? Man, you're full of pride. Yes. You're like, I'm okay. So everybody's, uh, they do their own thing, right? That's why you have no compassion and love for others. That's why when people pray about lost souls out there, because you have so much pride in yourself, your family, and whatever it is, that man, Instead of thinking about every single soul who's not saved on their way to hell, who needs to get saved, you just see them as just numbers now. Right. I lead them, check mark. I lead, I give track, check mark. There's no more heart in it. You know, pride, again, it's the danger 
of being a Bible-believing Christian where you start becoming self-reliant, self-complacent, self-dependent, and then you become, you lose that, you know, I'm, I'm using it, you know, very carefully, you lose that feeling. You lose that love for the lost souls and brothers and sisters in Christ. Right. Even for your family, because some of you neglect your family left and right. Yes. Why did this happen? It's because of your pride. Because you're, you're a selfish person. Amen. All you think about is yourself, right? right? Maybe all you think about is your family only, right? All yeah. you think about is your wife and husband. But you don't think about the body of Christ. And you don't think about the lost souls out there. Stop being selfish. Amen. Stop being self-centered. Stop being, you know, it's all about you. Amen. Right? Yes. I mean, it's a famous, you know, phrase and quote. You know, General Booth, before he went to be with the Lord, someone asked him, you know, General Booth, you know, could you say your last words? He just said others. You know, founder of Salvation Army. He said others. Amen. Right? I mean, would you say it? What's your legacy? Ah, uh, you know, how many people I led to the Lord, you know, like in the ministry for a long time. I read my Bible front and back, you know, left and right. I graduated from, you know, Bible college, you know, and I know all the special doctrines and you know, all the deep doctrines, you know. Mom. Or are you going to say others? And that's a great, great testimony, Amen. you know, men yeah. of God. Just remember, you know, if you don't, if you are not going to change your you know, prideful ways. You know, James 4, 6, that God resists the proud. Right? You want God to resist you? You want God to chastise you? Keep your prideful ways. Right? However, he giveth grace unto the humble. It's time for you and I to continuously check our hearts. Have we let anything in our life get in the way of giving glory, 100% honor and praise to the Lord? and snatch it away from him, stole it away from him, and then give it to ourself. If you did, you got to get right with the Lord. you got to confess and get right. Because Bible is clear. Pride went before destruction, and then Holy Spirit before a fall. Every eye closed, every head bow. And then we'll have an altar call. You know, if, if pride has gotten in the way, and if you know for sure, if you know who you are, you know, it's time to, you know, talk to the Lord and get right with the Lord. Because it's something that haunts every single Bible believer. We know too much. We know all these special things. And don't get me wrong, because you love the truth, that's why you came to the knowledge of truth. However, if we're not careful, we always, always let the pride get in the way. And inevitably, we become indifferent. Inevitably, we start taking things for granted. You know, Christians, you and I cannot take anything for granted. Even the air that you breathe in, you know, the garments, you know, the place that you and I could stay, you know, roof over our top. The fact that you and I could talk and converse, you and I, the fact that we could, you know, pass out tracts and lead people to the Lord, the fact that we could read, you know, that's all from the Lord. Remember, you and I are nothing. Without God, think about where you and I will be. Without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, where would you be today? I mean, He saved you and I from eternal lake of fire because He loved us. And because, you know, out of our free will, we trusted Him. It's time for us to get our perspective straight, priorities right, whatever you call it. Don't let the pride get in the way of serving the Lord like you and I should. If you don't have right fellowship with the Lord, it's because you're full of pride. And pride will lead to things of life, lust of the flesh, pride of life, right? Lust of the eyes. Pride will always bring you low. Pride will always destroy you. Pride will eventually eat you alive. Don't let that happen to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't let the pride 
destroy you. Pride will bring shame, as Proverbs 11, 2 said. But when you are humble and lowly, wisdom will come your way. Let God command you. Don't seek man's approval. Don't seek what man can do for you. Just always seek and give glory to God for what he can do for you.